If there's one brand who have thrown off their slightly stodgy British reputation, that would be MG. But now they've gone and thrown that completely away with the car behind me, the MG Cyberster, ready for our dystopian future. The thing is, I think this might just be the best car ever made. Want to find out how? Welcome to the Fully Charged Show. If you like the Fully Charged Show, you will love our Everything Electric exhibitions around the world. Next up, Everything Electric Australia. And Everything Electric London. Get your tickets today. They said it couldn't be done. They couldn't revive the MG brand. They couldn't bring out another MG sports car, but here it is, an MG sports car, the Cyberster. Now, this has some really nice sprinkles of Britishness in it. These headlights, for example, remind me a little bit of the MGTF or the Jaguar F-Type, both really good looking cars in my opinion. Now, related to the MGTF, this car's predecessor, you're probably wondering how much bigger this is. Well, it's not actually that much. So it's around about 30 centimeters longer and about 30 centimeters wider. On the weight side, yes, it is a bit heavier. It's around 800 kilograms heavier. But as technology moves on, I'm sure that weight will eventually go down. But it's such a striking looking car, perfect for our dystopian futures. Now you might be sitting there at home wondering, Elliot, is this just some fancy frock over some electric ogre of a car? And I can tell you now, absolutely not. Why can I say that? If you just look at the exterior, Brembo brakes all around, obviously very important. Pirelli P0 tires, very important when you're driving on the ragged edge. And it's got what I think most supercars, sports cars should have, which is this, scissor doors. Very important, probably the most important part. Now that sprinkle of Britishness is nowhere more apparent than the rear end. Now I love these kind of Union Jack-esque taillights. I think they look really good. However, it was just pointed out to me, they just look like two giant arrows telling people which way you're going. So not very subtle, but depends on how you look at the rear end of this car. Now there's one other area I should talk about, which is boot space. Yes, it has a boot. Yes, it's tiny and you might be able to fit some short golf clubs on the inside there. But we don't care about boot space, we care about how it drives. So let's go for a drive. So let's get straight into it. I'm shocked, really shocked, but shocked in a really good way, just in the way it drives. It's so agile, it's so nimble, it's so easy and effortless. It's a real pleasure to drive this convertible sports car. and I absolutely love it. You know what? Even though this is steering by wire, the steering feedback is really good. It's precise, it's accurate, and it's just really enjoyable. You know, you can just whip it around and the car responds fantastically. Now, suspension feel is also pretty good as well. It feels kind of soft in the right places, but really helps you grip onto the road when you need it. Now, obviously we're doing mostly city driving here in Shanghai, but in B roads of the UK, I think it's gonna be very supple, quite easy to turn into those tight B road corners. Whereas I think the MGB and the MGTF of the past really played into that British bumbling along British B roads in the 1950s. This really says a lot about the future of MG. Now acceleration is extremely brisk. I got a bit excited earlier and said this was the dual motor version. It's not, it's the single motor version. But even though it's the single motor version, it has enough go. I think it's about 4.6 seconds to 60 miles an hour. The rear motor spins up, there's a bit of uh, wheel spin as well, and you can really just gun it. And that's in sport mode. But with track mode, it goes even more nuts. Right, limber up Elliot, ready to get into the sports car. There you go. And when you get into this driving seat, it does feel like a true driving, sports car driving experience. I'm gonna shut my door with a touch of a button. We don't use handles. Now, what MG have gone for here is the luxury end of the market because they got to appeal to the most number of buyers and unfortunately, luxury sells. So there's some lovely materials in here. There's metally bits, there's Alcantara, there's suede, 
really nicely done. But then there's also some awkward bits. There's lots of piano black plastic, which I don't like. There's also these buttons up here for my drive modes, which are overly complicated. But the biggest crime in here is probably the four screens. There's four screens in here. Yes, they're small, but you shouldn't have four screens for a small sports car. So for example, this one shows my map, but the steering wheel blocks the road I'm going on. So I can't actually navigate very well. Yes, you can move the steering wheel up and down, but it doesn't make much difference. I can see the speedo, but sometimes the steering wheel blocks that. And the information over here about my G-Force is kind of irrelevant. So get rid of that. Down here, this is showing me my PM 2.5 filter and my heating controls and my heated seats. So, you know, luxury bits that I, I need down here. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how much does this all cost? Well, the price over here starts at about 300,000 RMB and goes up to about 350,000 RMB for the dual motor version. Now, in the UK, we're expecting the prices to be around about 50,000 pounds. We do not know yet, but we're expecting it to be around that. And for that, you get a lot of car for your money. Now, if like me, you do like driving around in dystopian cityscapes like Shanghai at nighttime, then you can. I've got heated seats. I've got really good blowers in here. But if for some reason it did get a little bit nippy and I wanted to take my woolly bobble hat off, then I can close the roof. Now, this takes just 10 seconds, the click of one button, and it can be done up to speeds of 32 kilometers an hour. And once this roof is closed, the feeling in the cabin is very different. In fact, I think it's even more sports car-like. It's also very quiet, and it's a very comfortable padded roof up the top. So it's a proper all-round sports car experience in every weather. Now, a couple of gripes in here. I think they need one of those wind deflectors back here. It does feel a bit blustery in here if you go over about 70 kilometers an hour. So that could be improved. Honestly, as an everyday daily car, why not get one of these? If you've only got you and your partner, you could easily do your shopping, go to the shops, cruise around, and then if you want a Sunday morning blast on the B road, you've got the right car for it. Absolutely cracking. Charging. Now you're probably wondering if there's anything special about charging with this Cyberster. Unfortunately not, it's pretty standard. That's not a bad thing. So this comes actually in two battery flavors, a 77 kilowatt hour battery and a 64 kilowatt hour battery, giving the car around 360 miles of CLTC range. Now take that with a massive pinch of salt because CLTC is not very accurate. Plus you're not going to be driving this sensibly. Let's be honest, it's a sports car without a roof. So we're not gonna get anywhere near 360 miles of range, but anyway, Pretty standard charging, AC, DC, both here. And you can close the cover like that. <laughs> now you would think with most sports cars, you don't get much in the way of tech, but this has got sensors. It's got radars around the car. So I can clearly see all of the vehicles around me on my screen. What I really can't get over is just how agile and nimble the car feels and it befits a car much smaller. It hides its heft very well. It's both size and its weight. And for me, how the engineers have done that, have designed out this car so it feels like a much smaller sports car is a real testament to MG's grown-upness. The engineers have done an absolutely fantastic job. I mean, all round, as a sports car, psh, blown away. And especially for the value you know, that it is in China, about 30,000 pounds, Obviously in the UK, it would probably be close to double that, but it's a really compelling offer. And it's one of the first sports cars on the market. Porsche haven't come out with theirs yet. That will be in a year or a couple of years time. So they've really got the whole market to themselves for the next couple of years. But my challenge to MG is to do a trophy version of this car, a really stripped back, like really basic materials, make it a little bit cheaper maybe make it 25,000 pounds here in China, strip it all back, get rid of most of the screens, make it really raw. And I think that would be appealing to a lot of people. Well, appealing to nerds like me anyway. <laughs>